Created by the hilarious C.H. Greenblatt, Chowder was one of the highlights of mid-2000s Cartoon Network. With its wacky and colorful world, outrageous sense of humor, and lovable characters, it quickly became a classic in the eyes of both kids and animation fans. But of all the residents in Marzipan City, which are pure-hearted and which are wicked? Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bitch, and this is Chowder, Good to Evil. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble characters and working our way down. These characters are the good. For the gold medal of good, we had to go with Ceviche. He was the apprentice of the dance master Pate and was best friends with Panini as well as friends with Chowder. Although Ceviche may be flat thanks to his monotone voice, and especially when compared to the show's other crazy and over-the-top characters, the kid's got a good heart. In the Apprentice games, he and his master were the only ones who didn't care about winning and were disappointed in the others for letting their competitiveness get the best of them. Although he usually follows Panini's lead, Ceviche will show concern whenever she's being unkind. In his day-to-day -day life, he can be kind and helpful, doing things like giving food to the poor and assisting old ladies across the street. Ceviche is also sensitive and empathetic, to the point where he prefers watching musicals over plays because, according to him, nobody dies in musicals. While he may only be a minor character, we can't deny how good and pure-hearted he is. Getting our silver medal of good is the lovable stink cloud, Kimchi. Every kid wants a pet, and for Chowder, that pet is Kimchi. Although others may be annoyed or disgusted by Kimchi's stink, Chowder likes it and accepts Kimchi for who he is, just as Kimchi accepts Chowder for who he is. Both of them consider each other their best friend, and even if it doesn't get a huge focus in the show, their relationship is sweet. He gives Chowder rides, sort of like the Nimbus Cloud from Dragon Ball, and is worried and anxious when Chowder is gone for an extended period of time. The two also play games with each other. Kimchi even saved Chowder from falling into a pit of fire. Although you wouldn't expect a stink cloud to be a good pet, Kimchi's goodness manages to shine through even the stinkiest of smells. Taking our bronze medal of good is Marmalade. With the part she played in the episode A Fair to Remember, it would have been easy to make Marmalade a typical mean girl. In actuality, she's the opposite. Marmalade is a beautician in training, and not only does she help make people feel beautiful, but she also uses natural and organic ingredients in her beauty products. She's good friends with Chowder and even has a crush on Ceviche. While she earned the ire of Panini, this was unwarranted, given that Marmalade never even tried to get between Panini and Chowder. Marmalade was oblivious to Panini's attempts at trying to break her and Chowder apart, and even being courteous towards Panini. However, once she realized what Panini had been trying to do, Marmalade didn't feel too fondly of Panini after learning about what she did, and we can't blame her for that. Although passive, oblivious, and underdeveloped, Marmalade doesn't have any dark sides. She's a nice girl, and it's no wonder that she fell for the nicest boy in Marzipan City. We finally come to the first of the main characters with Mung Doll. What pushes Mung Doll this high is the love he has for his apprentice, Chowder, who, despite all the chaos he causes, Mung sees as a son. Although he can be stern and doesn't always believe in Chowder's abilities, sometimes needs to resort to tough love, Mung tries his best to be patient and encouraging. Mung will also sacrifice for Chowder in an effort to make Chowder happy. He bought all of Chowder's poisonous purple nurples, both to spare his apprentice's feelings and to make sure no one died from eating them. And in the Christmas special, Mung swallowed his pride and bought a Schmenger bread house from Endive so Chowder can get the gift he wanted from Kanish Kringle. There are also times where Mung will do something dangerous or difficult for the sake of protecting Chowder, like when he fought Fungil or when he allowed the Meeches to attack him so that Chowder and Schnitzel could escape. Speaking of Schnitzel, Mung cares about him as both an employee and friend, although he can stand to be more respectful towards the guy. Additionally, while claiming to be a ladies' man, Mung still loves his wife, Truffles, and will usually try his best to make her happy, being completely loyal to her. So what keeps him from our podium of good? A few flaws, actually, with the most obvious being his pride. This is often seen through his rivalry with Endive, where he can sometimes be willing to do anything just to one-up her, and isn't shy about dragging the rest of his family into these schemes. This can include actual crimes, like filling her pool with pudding or trying to steal her underground sugar sapphires. Mung can also be stubborn and stuck in his ways when it comes to his cooking, and like we said earlier, he doesn't always treat schnitzel the best. 
often bring him into whatever shenanigans he and Chowder are getting into, overworking him or pinning blame on him. And he can also be cowardly. Simply put, Mung isn't perfect, but he's still good enough to earn himself a high spot on our list. Up next is Porridge. Porridge only had one appearance. While at first he seemed like a stiff and proper doppelganger of Chowder, Porridge revealed the truth. As it turned out, he was actually a detective with the Marzipan City Police Department. As Porridge explained, his goal was to capture Robert Limburger, otherwise known as the Bridal Bandit, and he knew that the only way to reveal the bandit's identity was through a fake arranged marriage. Although this was a noble goal, and Porridge still apologized for deceiving both Chowder and Kimchi, we had to knock him down a couple of slots for some questionable actions earlier in the episode. Porridge called Chowder an outsider and accused Kimchi of being ashamed of his culture. After hearing about how Chowder mistakenly kidnapped Kimchi, thinking that he had actually saved Kimchi's life, Porridge became even angrier and kicked Chowder out of the wedding, making Chowder believe that he would never see Kimchi again. Although we can assume that this was all part of the act Porridge was putting on to make all the wedding drama seem more realistic, it was still messed up and genuinely upset both Chowder and Kimchi. Even though it was for the greater good, we still had to dock Porridge some points. Chowder is next. At his core, this cat, bear, rabbit thing is sweet, innocent, and friendly. But he's also impulsive, sometimes careless, and highly sensitive and emotional. Although Chowder has a passion for being in the kitchen, he also has a passion for eating. It's often his reckless and occasionally selfish actions that jumpstart the conflict of each episode. He isn't the smartest kid in Marzipan City, leading him to be manipulated by people like Fungil or Kevin. Additionally, it is very easy for him to get carried away, to the point of it being dangerous. But unlike many other child protagonists, Chowder doesn't try to be sneaky or mischievous and is more naive than a troublemaker. He can be irresponsible and will need to be bribed with food to do something. Still, Chowder will almost always do his best to help people like Gaspacho and Schnitzel when they need it. And although this may be more of a nuisance than anything else, it's a thought that counts. Chowder will always fight for his friends, and for as much as Mung sacrifices for Chowder, Chowder will also try to sacrifice for Mung. There have even been times where Chowder has given Panini a hug or a kiss on the cheek to cheer her up or show gratitude, despite his fear of being a boyfriend. He's even shown kindness to total strangers, like Big Food and the Samini Monster, and he even once saved the life of his bully, Gorgonzola. Although he may still have a lot to learn and a lot to improve on, Chowder is still a good kid with a good heart that's almost as big as his appetite. Almost. Next is everyone's favorite rock monster, Schnitzel. Acting as the straight man or Squidward type, Schnitzel is overworked, underpaid, and grumpy, although we can't blame him for that. This translates to him being easily aggravated or frustrated by Chowder. On one occasion, he said that he'd rather fall into a bottomless pit than work with him. Schnitzel isn't ever actively mean towards Chowder and will occasionally protect him. He cared enough about both Chowder and Mung to miss them after he had quit and briefly worked for Endive. Schnitzel is occasionally selfless. Despite falling in love with Senorita Mesquite, Schnitzel chose to let her stay at her restaurant so that the children could keep enjoying her songs. He also puts himself in danger to protect Truffles from the blind owl, despite how much he dislikes her, and he will fight alongside Mung and Chowder, although it isn't always his choice. For the most part, he genuinely cares about his friends and does just enough to be considered a positive character. Wrapping up the good section is Gaspacho. Gaspacho is a produce and ingredient shopkeeper, with Mung and Chowder being two of his best customers. While his own life may seem like a mess, Gaspacho always offers advice and support to his little buddy. Even if it's not the best advice, Gaspacho will still help Chowder and look out for his well-being. He helped babysit Chowder when Mung and Truffles wanted to go out, and has helped Chowder with keeping Panini away from him. Possibly the biggest example comes from the series finale, when he encouraged Chowder to grow up and not to run away, reminding him that he was built to cook. What puts him this low is how often Gaspacho goes mad with power. Even ignoring the psycho parody in the Halloween special, Gaspacho enjoyed his role as a villain a little too much in the dinner theater episode. He was aggressive when it came to leading the Apprentice Scouts group, after becoming afraid that he would lose his scoutmaster position. There was also the time he began banning anyone and everyone from his fruit stand due to his paranoia. It's also worth noting that this was all due to a disagreement on a berry's color and ripeness, showing that Gaspacho can also be quick to anger. Needless to say, Gaspacho can be a man-child, 
although we can't completely blame him for that, considering the mother he has. Whenever he isn't going overboard, Gaspacho seems like a nice guy who cares about Chowder and will make up for his mistakes. As such, we feel he does enough to barely squeak in to the good tier. That's it for the good characters, now it's time to descend into neutral territory. This is the gray area. First, we have Chestnut. Chestnut is a silly character, but he packs a punch, both literally and in memorability. His most memorable quality is his tendency to mistake random objects or people as items of furniture in his own possession. Chestnut will claim the items that he finds as his own. This is technically stealing, or kidnapping, depending on what exactly he's taking. Even if he believes he's taking what he thinks is junk that someone left in the street, he mistook a sleeping Mung doll for his long-lost dining room table, a stop sign as his living room sofa, Chowder's hat as a vacation home, and a briefcase as a hydrofoil. As wacky of a character trait this is, if you try to steal something that Chestnut believes is his, he won't hesitate to give you the beating of a lifetime. Because of this, Chestnut is argumentative, stubborn, and selfish, as well as quick to violence. However, he's also very grateful towards people who help him out instead of trying to take his stuff, and shows to be friendly and helpful towards them in return. Chestnut was also shown to be a teacher in the BLTs episode, supervising the apprentices as they took their test. He's far from being a villain, he just tends to be protective of his found furniture. From the Marzipan PD, we have Sergeant Hokey. He's the only member responsible enough to be the head of the Marzipan police force, although that isn't much of an accomplishment. As much as Hoagie may try to get his fellow officers in line, he can be as cowardly or careless as they are. In his first appearance, he wasted several minutes arguing who to send into a dangerous situation first, not wanting to take on that duty himself despite, you know, being the highest ranking officer. Then in another episode, Hoagie cares more about making it to his hot date on time than actually punishing the person who filled Endive's pool with pudding. At his worst, Hoagie is incompetent when it comes to doing his job. He'll still do it, but he definitely cares more about his own well-being than that of the marzipan citizens. Smingerbread lover and gift giver, Kanesh Kringle, is next. Getting this out of the way, yes, he's pretty much just the Chowder Universe's version of Santa Claus, albeit with one small caveat. Examples of kids being naughty and nice don't matter to him. All Kanish Crinkle cares about is whether or not you have a delicious smingerbread house. If you do, expect plenty of gifts come Kanish Miss Morning. But if not, he not only destroys your smingerbread house, but he'll usually wreck your actual house too. That's harsher than just leaving a lump of coal. While this may be his nature, it also makes Kanish Crinkle come off as greedy and needlessly aggressive. He even attacked Chowder and his friends for impersonating him and trying to eat the smingerbread house meant for him. Thankfully, like the actual Santa Claus, he has a soft spot for kids and was willing to give Chowder his gift after seeing Chowder's example of kindness and sacrifice. It showed that although it wasn't what he was looking for, Kanish still wanted to reward acts of niceness. It's a small moment, but it's enough to keep him out of the bad tier. Up next is Kiwi, possibly the most neutral non-character of them all, but considering how often he appears, we still had to give him a quick mention. Kiwi is a stop-motion monster that appears during occasional cutaways. He serves as the show's commentator and will give his thoughts, opinions, and responses to various scenes or characters. He's like Statler and Waldorf from the Muppets, though he's thankfully not as mean as they are. In some instances, he'll be making fun of a character, calling a joke bad, or asking for the episode to end. In other instances, he'll try to encourage the characters. Most of the time, he's just a fairly neutral observer, but hey, at least he's still funny. Reaching the last of our main four, we have Truffles. Truffles can be mean and abrasive. Every character is at least a little afraid of her. Like Monk says, if she's not happy, nobody's happy not even the audience. Truffles can be competitive when it comes to games like Mahjong, and she refuses to see her own faults, usually blaming everyone else for whatever faults she has. She can be stern, even more than Mung or Schnitzel, and it's implied that if someone brings gum into her home and doesn't share with her, she'd kill them. Yikes. So what exactly keeps her from the bottom? Well, as bitter and hot-headed as Truffles can be, she has a soft side. When she realized how scared the LMLs were of her, Truffles put in the effort to be kinder and was able to earn their trust. Then there was a time with the big hat biddies. Although Truffles wanted nothing more than to be a part of their club, once the biddies began verbally attacking Mung for the bad meal he served them, driving him to tears, Truffles became furious and called out the biddies, defending both her husband and his cooking. 
And while Truffles has threatened to beat or kill Chowder before, she still seems to have a deep affection for him, treating him like her own son, giving him the deviled schmeg he wanted in the Mahjong episode, and even worrying about him at times. Despite a rough exterior, Truffles loves her family, and that's not nothing. We're ranking Panini next on our list. Panini is very much the Chi Chi to Chowder's Goku. It may be a strange comparison, but C.H. Greenblatt actually compared the two pairs once in a blog post, even comparing parts of his show's finale to Dragon Ball's finale. As such, Panini has very similar flaws to Chi-Chi, namely her aggressive nature when it comes to her love interest. Thus, she can be pushy and forceful, like when she had Chowder help her take care of their blue Nana baby, just so she can be close to him, or when she forced him to hold her hand despite how much it burned him. She was even planning on passing a law that would make Chowder her property if she became the Apprentice Club president. Though she may seem sweet, Panini fights people who aggravate her, like Gorgonzola and even Gaspacho on one occasion. Although these traits aren't a good look for Panini, we feel that there isn't enough here to put her in the bad tier. For one thing, we have to remember that Panini only had N-Dive to look up to in her childhood, not exactly the best role model when it comes to romance and relationships, or even just being a good person. Furthermore, Panini does seem to genuinely care about Chowder. Though she still chooses to follow N-Dive's orders, she's reluctant to hurt him, and outside of her relationship with Chowder, she can be occasionally sweet. She also never does anything that could be considered truly evil, although we're sure many will agree that Panini still has a lot of room to grow. Finishing up the grades here, we have Sauron of the Puckerberry Overlords. We're sure this entry is going to surprise a few people, but let us explain. Yes, Sauron tried to take over Chowder's mouth after Chowder ate the Puckerberry, but unlike the villains that we'll be getting to in a second, this wasn't necessarily an active choice, given that Sauron and the other Overlords are more a physical representation of the sourness that Chowder experienced than actual people. The taking over of Chowder's mouth was just their nature, like one flavor overwhelming an entire dish. Additionally, once Chowder presented them with something sweet, their attitude quickly changed, and they were able to go from evil to good, and even seemed happy about this change. So while Sauron was an antagonist and a jerk, he was still able to make a change once he was able to experience some sweetness in his otherwise sour life. That wraps up the gray area. Now it's time for the characters who are just rotten to the core. These characters are the bad to evil. We're starting off with the lonely Cinnamini Monster. Even with how he eventually turned out, it's hard to not feel sorry for the Cinnamini Monster. Living alone in Cinnamini Tree, this monster was desperate for a friend, and that friend ended up being Chowder and his friends. The monster shrunk them all down and forced them to play board games, taking clinginess to a whole new level. Still, ignoring the force shrinking and kidnapping, this normally wouldn't be too bad, but unfortunately, the Cinnamini monster is a sore loser. Whenever someone starts beating him, he just changes the game that they're playing. But no matter who wins, him or his guest, he'll just keep pulling out games to play. He even went so far as to lock the door of his home and swallow the key forcing Chowder and the gang to stay there forever. We never learn how they escaped, but we're sure it wasn't easy. Although we can't call the Cinnamini monster a villain, given that he likely acted out because of his loneliness, we can sort of see why he didn't have any friends before. Despite a happy demeanor, we wouldn't consider Mr. Fugu to be a good guy. Mr. Fugu is one of the richest people in Marzipan City, and with this status, he can get away with whatever he wants. Although not as malicious as some of our upcoming entries, he can be greedy when it comes to food due to his insatiable appetite. He never shares his food, and essentially mooched off of Chowder when Chowder was his valet for a day. The only thing that rivals his need for food is his need for entertainment. When he held a contest where participants could win a giant mixer, Fugu was happy to have his valet spice things up. From spraying the challengers with orange soda, to sending out wiener dogs, to even having all the contestants battle a giant troll. He can also be stern when it comes to the themes of his costume parties, and will get angry at anyone who doesn't follow the theme. At his worst, Fugu is a selfish and eccentric rich guy, and although that's still not great, it's admittedly better than some of the people we have coming up. Up next is the surly Gorgonzola, a candle-holding apprentice. He serves as Chowder's nemesis and bully throughout the series. He's bratty and loves making Chowder miserable, if only for the sake of proving that he's better than Chowder. He'll make fun of Chowder's weight or intelligence, and in general, he's just not a nice kid. However, Gorgonzola's opinion towards Chowder actually changed for the better after Chowder saved his life. Following this, Gorgonzola starts to treat Chowder better. 
he starts insulting him less, and even goes so far as to help Chowder in a couple of episodes. Other times, though, he'll use Chowder as a means to an end, like when he forced Chowder to run for president of the Apprentice Club, just so Panini didn't win. Probably one of his worst, albeit funniest scenes, is when he extorted and forced a disguised Mung to give him all the money he had, in exchange for Chowder's poison purple nurples. Although he never does too much to grow past his bully persona, we're willing to cut him a bit of slack, since he is a kid, and most of his actions are little more than aggravating. If Chowder can forgive him, so can we. Following him, we have the poultry geist, Florentine. He was a former flirky that won a revenge on Mung for not eating him, leaving him to rot behind the refrigerator. Side note, this won't be the only character we have in this tier that's out for revenge against our favorite mustache chef. Anyway, after several years of decay, Florentine took it upon himself to begin haunting the catering company's kitchen. And of course, when Chowder eats him, he possessed Chowder and used his body to cause havoc and destruction in the kitchen. This included smashing dishes, destroying cookbooks, and puking on schnitzel. Although the character of Florentine, as well as the episode that he comes from, is meant to be a parody of things like Poltergeist and The Exorcist, he never does anything too awful. Now, don't get us wrong, possessing a child isn't great, and neither is property damage. But the worst Florentine does is destroy a few things and threaten to eat Mung's soul. Again, not not great, but not exactly pure evil either. Additionally, once Florentine's spirit is calmed by being put into a new, freshly cooked flirky body, he actually settles down and vows to do good, showing that he was more angry and resentful than outright evil. Too bad he doesn't actually get that chance to do good, considering Mung and the others eat him after this. But that was what he wanted in the first place, so win-win. Just outside of our top four is the gross and mean Fungal. Like most pixies, Fungil is a mischievous trickster. He fooled Chowder, as well as a young Mung doll, into thinking he was a delicious spice, even telling them that they could impress their cooking masters by using him. Fungil also convinced Chowder to join him, leading to Fungil gaining control over Chowder and the two of them becoming a giant mold monster that nearly destroyed Marzipan City. If not for Mung stepping in when he did, inspiring Chowder to fight back against the pixie, the world might have been covered in mold. Simply put, Fungil is a manipulative liar who only saw Chowder and Mung as a means to a moldy end. The fact that he would use kids as his host, knowing that they'd be easy to trick, makes him even worse. Getting our bronze medal of evil, we have Reuben. In terms of who you would want as your customer, Reuben could easily rival most carrots. Much like Mr. Fugu, Reuben is greedy and piggish when it comes to food. But unlike Fugu, Reuben is sneakier with how he gets his free meals. In nearly every appearance, Reuben is scamming and manipulating Mung Doll. In his first major appearance, he was a cooking instructor, obviously favoring Endive over Mung, while constantly putting Mung down for his non-traditional cooking skills. Later on, Reuben tricked the gang into being his servants after planting his rat friend in the sandwich that he ordered from the catering company, saying that he'll show the rat to everyone in town and put the company out of business. It's also implied that he's done this to several other food establishments like the farmer's market. And as if he couldn't be any more of a jerk, he doesn't even share his food with his rat friend. In another episode, Reuben tricks Mung Doll, Chowder, and Schnitzel into boarding his party ship, which he stole, because of course he did. This leads to the trio getting arrested for something they didn't even do, since Reuben escaped. Overall, Reuben is arrogant and extremely annoying, and while that isn't necessarily a sin, scheming and lying to get free food definitely is. For the silver medal of evil, it's Miss Endive. It should be no surprise that the main antagonist is this far down. Endive is a cruel, prideful, and possessive woman. As Mung's rival, she's constantly trying to antagonize and insult him, doing all she can to force him into admitting that she's the better chef. She'll purposely do things like put her stand right across from Mung's at the Marzipan City Street Fair. In another episode, Endive spent the whole day using Mung and Chowder as her servants, forcing them to do horrible tasks, and even almost killed them after giving them the nearly impossible task of peeling grotatoes. Even she was horrified by her actions, although that didn't stop her destroying the mood fruit that they were fighting over. Endive is snobbish and bitter to everyone. 
Not just Monk, not even her apprentice, Panini, can get much affection from her, with Endive only treating her like a student and using her as a pawn in her schemes. But her worst side comes out whenever romance is involved, especially when it comes to Schnitzel. She forces him into uncomfortable and awkward situations like giving her CPR or dancing for her. And when Schnitzel let her know that he had a girlfriend, Endive threatened to eat him if he didn't change his mind about marrying her. That is insane. Needless to say, Endive is awful. However, we don't feel that she does enough to be the worst. Like we said, she felt bad when she thought that she killed Mung and Chowder, and she was willing to make peace during her and Mung's food war. That is, until Mung decided to smush his strudel doodles into her face for one final hit. Then she went back to hating him, which is fair. Even if these moments are minor when compared to all the other awful things that she's done, they're still worth acknowledging, if only to show that Endive isn't completely heartless. Taking the gold medal of evil, we have Gumbo, Mung's previous apprentice. In his one episode, Gumbo tricked Chowder into getting trapped in his deadly maze, all for the sake of getting Chowder out of the way so that he can get his revenge on Mung by drowning him in spice. By the way, Gumbo only won revenge because of constructive criticism on Mung's part, not because Mung actually wronged him or did anything worthy of revenge. So Gumbo is petty, as well as insane. In any case, attempted murder is never a good look, whether or not the would-be victim deserved it. And considering that Gumbo is one of the few characters in the show that actually tried to kill someone, along with trying to trap a child in a deadly maze and even trying to kill Chowder himself after getting really frustrated with them, we of course had to put him pretty low. It should also be noted that while Gumbo decided not to kill Mung, it wasn't because of a change of heart or a realization that he was doing wrong, but because he realized that nothing he did would ever measure up to the grief that Chowder caused Mung every day. We feel sorry for Gumbo, given all that he had to go through, but that doesn't take away from just how evil this guy has the potential to be. All right, that's the list. Let us know in the comments if you agree with our ranking and tell us which series you'd like to see next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.